And welcome everyone to the top of Partington Hall here on the beautiful hillside campus of Nye College. My name is Brad and I'm the station manager here at WMYK 88.7 FM, the home of Warrior Radio. I'm very excited to have Emily Kenny call in live today. We're going to debut her great new song, The Turtle and the Monkey, in just a bit. It has a great vibe, guys, so stay tuned for that. But first things first, Emily, just thanks for taking the time to call in today. I know you're super busy, so we appreciate it. No, it's our pleasure. Emily Kinney is a multi-talented dual threat actor and singer-songwriter who played Beth Green on The Walking Dead, as well as roles on The Flash, Arrow, Conviction, and much more. We at WMYK love her music as well, and I can't speak highly enough about Oh Jonathan, which is a 2018 release, so be sure to check that out, guys. She also just released a music video for Holding Your Hand in Nashville, which I want to talk about quickly, but today is all about premiering The Turtle and the Monkey, Oh, just a great new track with a great vibe. Now, Emily, I always get curious how artists first start out in music. Was it family driven or was it more of an individual outlet for you? Well, my parents are big music fans. Cool. Like they aren't singers or musicians really. Um, but they like growing up, they took us to concerts all the time and just like we're really in to music like yep. I can remember going to Chicago and the Beach Boys and like just them taking us to music shows and um that kind of stayed with me and then they had um a pretty good record collection so the, my first like intro into like learning songs and singing was the Carpenters I would just oh. sit in front of the record player and listen to the Carpenters and learn the song and then sing it for my family you know so that was kind of like the beginning of, I mean, that was when I was really little, you know, like yeah. five years old or something. Yeah. So um, that was kind of the beginning of me being like, you know, really into music. Talk about classic, too. The Carpenter. And he, actually, even just talking about Christmas, right? We play a lot of them for, for Christmas, yeah. actually. Yeah, uh, I love the Carpenters. Now, you've obviously found success as both an actor and a musician. But I wanted to ask you, what gives you the bigger rush when you hear a director yell, action on set? or when you step on that music stage to perform live? Um, you know, I really like both for different reasons, yep. but it is actually similar, to, like, like talking about those specific moments of, like, action or, like, stepping on stage, I really love, there's a certain, like, moment of calm that happens, and it's, like, a, a focus, and I... I love that. Like, yeah. so both of them sort of, I, it's hard for me to pick one or the other. Like, um, they kind of serve different like purposes. Like there is of course something so special about my own music because I wrote it. And so there's sort of like a through line of like, I remember the day I wrote the song Absolutely. And, of it, and then getting it to the point of being able to rehearse it with a band or what, you know, and perform it. I got to see that through line, you know? So there's something, like, I guess extra special about, their, like, my little creations. Yeah. But I have to say, as far as, like, the actual experience of performance, like, I love being on set and or in a theater show and the moment of the show starting because I just feel like everyone's really quiet. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a focus that happens, and I love being in that zone. Like, that zone, I feel like I'm just, like, constantly trying to get to. I like that. It's a good explanation. Now, the, yeah. the precarious balance of being both an actor and a musician I, and devoting enough time to both modes of entertainment, because from an outside perspective, I'm like, wow, Emily, she's busy. You know, travel, music, yeah. acting. How does it work with, like, do you have a certain amount of time you try to devote to music, and then you're like, all right, this is acting? Do you just kind of play it by ear? Because I feel like you've got to keep yourself busy. Do you love that rush? Yeah. Um, I, you know, the hardest thing about it is scheduling. Mm -hmm. Because, like, if you're if you're an actor, you are part of, like, a bigger person's picture. And when it comes to, like, auditions and scheduling, you have to be sort of available. Um, and so there's just a lot of, like... Part, like moving parts but I yeah. will say that like I do feel like they complement each other because with every new acting project I'm kind of introduced into a new world I meet new people I usually have to go to a new city and that kind of fuels new stories for my writing yeah and also I do feel like um you know 
know, acting is a really is is a really competitive industry, and you do spend a lot of time kind of waiting. Yeah, you know, waiting on set, waiting um, for an audition, and and I think that it's important. Like some of the happiest actors I've met, they have some other creative outlet whether or even or just something else they really really care about whether it's they just have like a really big family that they you know love to as much as of they course. can hang out with and so, you know so like i feel like for me having music kind of is a is like kind of a relief like i don't have to wait around i have this other thing that i'm i'm kind of chipping away yeah. at yeah no that makes a lot of sense you know and we yeah and we introduced you as a singer-songwriting. Uh, songwriter appears to be important to you. You associate yourself as a singer and a songwriter. I think there's a distinction yeah. there. Where do you find your inspiration for writing? Like, we talk to artists that they get woken up at 3 a.m. and have to write notes in their phone, and that's the beginning of Or they have a riff in their head, and that starts it. Or, you know, it's just life itself. Do you have a, do you have a mode for how you come up with songwriting? Is it fluid? Is it life itself? I always get curious about that. Yeah. Like I've had times in my life when I've been very like disciplined about it. Like, oh, I'm gonna every morning start a song, you know, fin- like. Um, and then there's times when, yeah, I just kind of like let it. Like, like for me, it is so much a chance for me to work out my own emotions, and so it's more of like if I, I usually have a phrase, or I feel like some of my best songs are ones where I have a phrase that's sort of like bouncing around in my mm-hmm. head. And then it's almost like the song is supporting that, like, bit of truth or that little phrase or that emotion, you know. And so then I'm creating the song around that. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's, so it starts for me a lot with, like, with words, to be honest. And then I sit down, you know, when I have, like, some bit, some phrase, I, then I sit down at the piano or the guitar but now I mean over time it's shifted you know now sometimes I will just like mess around on the guitar and then come up with something and then the the poem sort of goes along with the I see. guitar bit you know so it, it changes yeah that's good yeah, yeah. it's fluid right um, now yeah. I feel like there's vulnerability to songwriting do you find writing your own lyrics almost cathartic in nature um, yeah I mean I'm yeah, it's it's something. I think that's why I do write a lot by myself. Yeah. Because like, I have to get to, like, I do feel like my songs are moments of being like super honest with how who I am and how I'm feeling, even if that means it's gonna change. Mm-hmm. You know, like in that exact moment or in a certain moment, how I felt and. Um, that is a vulnerable place to be and I I have a hard time sometimes exploring that with like you know I'm not one of those people who writes with like five other people yeah. you know like <laughs> yeah. so um yeah it's and my favorite songs are ones where I feel like I I felt like they are revealing something about their personality like I see. You know, you feel like you actually get, like, their point of view. Like, I love records where I listen to the whole record, and now I feel like I know something about how that person's brain works. Yeah. And, I, and so I do try to be really, yeah, vulnerable and honest. Yeah, there's almost like a transparent narrative to it, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, I feel like if there's any place to be just, like, tell my side of the story it's it's even even if it's messy or a bit mean or this or that like that's the place to do it yeah that makes sense yeah now favorite musical memory for you this could be tough it could be something where it's like your first show it could be a great venue but when you close your eyes you think that was really cool um well the thing that's in my head right now a lot is i just finished my next record and i I, I feel like it's really, really special, and um, we recorded it at Seahorse very quickly downtown, like, in, like, one or two days, but I just remember a couple moments where me and the producer, Ben, like, looked at each other and were like, wow, this is awesome, really awesome and yeah. special, and, like, I am excited, you know? So right now, that's 
like those two days at Seahorse were just like so um, exciting, and I and that's what's kind of like present in my head right now, and and kind of making me excited for new music. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I gotta ask you, we just did a Christmas show earlier, and I noticed yesterday, or you posted something on Instagram where you did a quick cameo of a song. I think it was Santa yeah. Baby, right? If you could mention yeah. your favorite current Christmas album, because it's a mood, man, when you find a good Christmas album. Yeah, okay, I have a great Christmas album for you. It came out last year. It's J.D. McPherson. He's a Nashville like singer-songwriter, yep. and he has an album called Socks, and it's very, like, um, I don't know, big band vibe. Like, it's just, like, got such its own vibe, and awesome. it's so cool. And um, last year... Christmas, I was listening to it a bunch, and that's, if you haven't heard that album, it's a, it's so good. Well, it's good, because I haven't, I haven't heard it, so now we'll look, we have over a thousand songs I last looked on our playlist, Christmas playlist, we have a lot, and I do not have that, so I'm excited now, thanks for letting yeah. me know about that. Now, yeah. I did also want to ask you about Holding Your Hand in Nashville, that just came, the video was just released, correct, if you could talk about how yeah. that all came to be and where people can find that. Everywhere you listen to music, you know, iTunes, Spotify, um, and obviously YouTube. Yep. And, yeah, it was just a song. So the last two songs that I put out, um, they were just ones that me and Ben, they, they're not on the new album that's coming out next year, but Ben and I were working on, we just, like, we're continuing to, like, write and make stuff. And um, I just, like, really liked this song, and I wanted the video to feel very, like, my little memories of being in Nashville because I I've see. kind of been going back and forth between LA and Nashville in, I mean, it's the song's true in this like long distance relationship. Yeah. And, um, I like, yeah, I just wanted the video to feel like almost like little memories or something. Yeah. You get, you get um, that vibe. Yeah. And it's like, there's just, uh, so yeah, I just wanted it to be something really, simple like people were really getting kind of an insight into like just you know like there's um in the song there's a part called uh it's like i always like go running in the mornings and stuff and you know there's like in the video i'm in uh there's shelby park mm -hmm. and like i go running there and like i uh you know so some of the videos just me like walking around like by myself there and um so yeah and there's like a lot of little like my favorite spots like five points pizza in nashville is like the best pizza and like you know there's like just like little like i've really started to um love that city i've heard great things about nashville we've had a few and a, a lot of songwriters it sounds like there's a lot of songwriters that are down there not even necessarily vocalists oh, yeah. but songwriters connect down there too yeah so many um creative people in yeah nashville. now if you could talk about before we get into the turtle and the monkey, for people listening to this who are interested in merchandise, your website, because I know you have cool merchandise on your website, any upcoming projects, yeah. just kind of plug where to find everything, your website and everything, Emily, please. Yeah, um, so my website is emilykinneymusic.com, and there are a few new merch items this year, like with the two new songs, um, Cozy Sweater, uh, you know, Vinyl of O Jonathan. Yep. Um, Great album. And then, you know, I, I really use Instagram a lot, so mm -hmm. that's a great place to, like, sort of know what I'm up to, like, you know, that day, or, um, like, I just played a show at Hotel Cafe last night, so, you know, I, like you said, you saw some clips of the yep. Christmas song, so, um, I'm, like, Instagram is a great way to, like, keep up with what I'm doing, um, and that's at, at Emmy Kinney, E-M-M-Y-K-I-N-N-E-Y. And then um, I have a new show on Netflix coming out January 1st. You'll be able to watch all 10 episodes on New Year's Day. Um, it's called Messiah, and I'm, you know, I'm really proud of that, of being a part of that show. Cool. I think it's going to be really good, so you can check that out on well, Net Day. Well, Netflix is huge, right? Streaming services in general. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, the inspiration behind The Turtle and the Monkey. Great song, great vibe. I love it. And if you could talk about how it came to be, and then we're gonna we're proud to play it here. Yeah. Um, so actually, I wrote this song um, after a little fight I had gotten into. Yeah. And I I thought it was a really cute like country song, 
And I didn't necessarily want to put it on my new album, but I just sort of like saved it. And I was like, huh, I wonder what, because every once in a while, or a lot actually, I'll write songs that I don't feel like are necessarily for me. So I just kind of like kept it on my computer. And then, um, and then actually, um, Walking Dead was looking for a country song. Mm -hmm. And that was all that they said, basically. And I ended up sending internal and monkey and i didn't hear anything at first i was like oh mine probably didn't get picked and then i ended up actually like one day angela the showrunner you know emailed me and was like hey we really want to use your song like you know um she had a few notes and they ended up actually picking it for the show so then i felt sort of this need to i guess um i was like oh wow well i would like you know i wanted to release my own version as well um, so that honestly is what made me, um, want to kind of like release a song yeah. was knowing that it was going to have this, um, this, this audience and these, and people wanting to hear the whole version. Um, so, so yeah, that's how it came about, but it's just kind of a, a song about when, you know, when things get, you know, the beginning of a relationship is always really fun and magical and then there's the moments where you're like oh this is like we're different people and this is going to take a little more yeah real life yeah 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 so um yeah no that's how the song came about yeah no it's a great song we're proud to play it emily (laughs) kinney multi-talented dual threat i'm glad you're utilizing (laughs) your gifts thanks for doing this we really appreciate please keep us surprised of any new music we're happy to play it great vibe Yeah, thank you guys. You're listening to WNYK 88.7 FM. And once again, this is The Turtle and the Monkey by the talented Emily Kinney. Thank you. I'm a lamb if you love me, the lion if you hope. And if we're going to be laughing, I would like to be in on the joke. Sometimes I think you show me scabs just to tempt me to tear me. Each other's eyes. 